All right, Iady Hoops here with uh, Michael Severe, host of the new show, The Bottom Line, from the World Herald. Uh, tell us a little bit about the show. It's starting up next week. It is. It starts March 3rd. It'll be 2 to 6. You can find us online, online at Omaha.com. We'll have the Bottom Line map, which is coming out very soon. And then also TuneIn Radio is another way to get a hold of us. But, you know, we're trying to cover sports, news, entertainment, a little bit of everything. We basically want to cover everything that applies to you as a guy, and then women as well. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, dealing with your kids, um, what movie you're going to go to, where you're going to take your wife, what concerts in town. We want to do all of that stuff, and hopefully we can over the course of a five-day week with 20 hours a week. Right, that sounds cool. Um, well, we're a hoop show. Let's talk a little bit sure. of hoops in Nebraska. Uh, you alluded to maybe Nebraska turned into a hoop state. It right? is. Uh, right now, what, let's start with, um, with Nebraska. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion on what they got going, how their second half has kind of turned around and they got some steam? You know, it's amazing. I know at the beginning of the season, I thought they could win six, maybe seven conference games. They're already to that point. Uh, I didn't know Petaway was going to be this good. He mm -hmm. is literally, he's kind of a clicker as we called him in high school. He shoots a lot, mm -hmm. but every time there's a big shot and you need it, he's gotten it so far. Um, I'm very impressed with him. I'm impressed with the way they're getting some guard play because they're really just trying. Ty Webster didn't play well early. He's playing better now. Mm -hmm. uh, you got walk-ons coming in and playing. You got Pitchbird, who is a center but mm -hmm. shooting threes. Um, they're impressive to watch, and it's all Coach Miles. I mean, he is an excellent builder of a program, yeah. and he's about, I think he's two to three years ahead of schedule now. Yeah. If, they get, if they can make it to the tournament this year, they're obviously three years ahead. If they can get to the NIT and finish in the top half of the Big Ten, they've already beaten most of the expectations of most fans. And, and talk about the fan base a little bit. I don't know if you've had a chance to be down to any games, but, I mean, it's definitely gotten really charged up there, especially here this second half. It has. Year. They're still kind of learning. You can see at times in a game where the opponents of the free throw line, it should be raucous. People right. should be going nuts, and they aren't that loud. But, yeah, it's been amazing, the sellouts. It's a great idea by the administration to lower those prices uh -huh. at Pinnacle Bank Arena. I have a friend who has four tickets in the balcony behind um, the basket paid like $200 for them. I mean, it's a great deal for the home games, and now you got people in there, they're starting to like it, they'll keep coming. You know, mm -hmm. it's an investment. It's almost like a lost leader at a grocery store. You charge a little bit less for the strawberries, they come in, they love it, they come back for more. All right, all right. All right well, let's move to Omaha then and talk sure. about the Jays. I mean, the Jays are uh, on a roll, and they're top 10 in the country right now. What mm -hmm. What's your assessment of how the season's gone for them and maybe some projections for how it could end? Yeah, well, just like I thought it would. I thought they would lose five total games. I was thinking two in the non-conference, three in the conference. So they have to lose another one for that to happen, but uh, they're about what we thought they were. They're scoring at a higher rate than probably most people anticipated. Defense is a little bit better. Uh, Doug is doing what he's doing. They survived an injury to the glue guy and Grant mm -hmm. Gibbs. That was pretty amazing. Mana guy's taking steps. Chapman's taking steps. Um, it, you can really see the future of this team, too. There's some young guys that are coming off the bench that next year are going to have to carry the load, right. and it looks like they could do that. Um, I, I think that's a team that can obviously get past the first round, and they should be able to get past the second round. It's all about matchups. Mm -hmm. If they get a third seed or a second seed, you won't have to worry about matching up with North Carolina and Duke like the last two years. Uh, Maybe they get a lesser team and can get to that Sweet 16. Uh, Going into the season, I thought they could reach the Sweet 16 and get knocked off there. The way they're playing now, most power projections have them in the top five. Almost mm -hmm. every gambling site that does a power poll mm -hmm. has them in the top five because mm -hmm. they've been so efficient. I don't know. I mean, is really there? Is there a limit for them? Could they get to the yeah. Final Four? Yeah. If that happened in this state, this yeah. city would explode. It'd yeah. be amazing. All right. Well, then Doug McDermott is final year. What What are some words? How can you put into words what he's been able to do over yeah. his career? Yeah. You know, I'm a, I'm an old school basketball guy. I was really into it in the 70s and 80s, a little bit in the 90s, and I kind of fell off as being a football fan. But if you start looking at the amount of guys that are three times all three time All Americans, it's a short list. Yeah, guys like Luau Center. Mm -hmm. When you fall into that list, now I know a lot of guys now don't stay four years, but to have a three-time All-American is amazing. Mm -hmm. And he's just about as efficient offensive as you possibly can be. You know, maybe length might bother him at the next level, but at this level, he dominates. Right. And uh, he's fun to watch. Every time you watch him, you see him do something new. You're like, oh, he learned a new move, you know? Yeah. He's just so technically sound. He's always in the right spot. Joined by Michael Severe, host of the uh, the new show, The Bottom Line, on the World Herald, Omaha.com. Check it out. i got two more questions for you. Sure. One, some coaches have uh, been coming out talking about social media recently. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard Rick Pitino and Fran McCaffrey, two coaches that really aren't supportive of it. Yeah. If you look at Nebraska and Creighton, their coaches are really active on it and supportive of it. What's your assessment of social media, maybe particularly Twitter, and how it's impacting some of these players and, the, and, and their teams? Well, let me give you an idea. So when I started in radio 10 years ago, to get a hold of somebody, to get them as a guest, 
was almost impossible. Mm -hmm. Literally, maybe you could find their email, maybe you could, you know, get a hold of a place where they worked, get their work number, and then maybe find their cell mm -hmm. phone number. Now, you contact everybody on Twitter and Facebook. Mm -hmm. That's the way you get a hold of everybody. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can get a hold of almost every guest by doing that because they all have Twitter and Facebook. Right. These are older people. Imagine the kids. Every single kid has a Twitter, has a Facebook. I think it's it's a priority for coaches to be there and to use it mm -hmm. and be able to take advantage of what it is for social mm -hmm. media. I can't imagine why a coach would say that it's not efficient and it's not something they need. They have to be Rick Pitino, who can get almost any guy he wants. Right. But any other coach in the country has to be doing it and has to be on there. Right. All right, well, let's just uh, finish up with uh, some restaurant talk. What okay. are, Off the top of your head, what are some of your favorite restaurants in Omaha right oh, now? Oh, man, there's so many of them. It's become such a great chef-driven restaurant. Friday, I'm going to lunch with a friend of mine. We're going to Block 16 uh -huh. down at Farnham and 16th Street. Always great sandwiches, always great food. Um, so many, Lot 2, yeah. another great place to go eat over in Benson. One of my favorite places, though, to eat. If, you, if you're ever looking for just great home cooking, there's a place it's called Finicky Frank's. It's right off of, uh, it's by the Mormon Bridge, mm -hmm. that area, just past uh, Florence. Go out there, great chef, she's wonderful. She makes new stuff every single day. Order the special, get the crab cakes. My favorite place to eat in town. Cool, thanks for joining us, Michael. You guys gotta tune in the show, The Bottom Line, Mondays through Fridays, and some other stuff going on, Omaha.com. Thanks, John. Thanks, Mike.